And you're watching NDTV Hindu. Hi there, you're watching the late night news on NDTV Hindu. I'm Ramanathan. The top stories we're following tonight. Tamil Nadu Chief Secretary orders Sirida would land to be distributed to the landless in the district. Jai Lalitha gets a clean shit in the case. The report on Nalini's poisoning allegations against the prison authorities to be out in two days, says the state law minister. Decomposed body of an MTech student found in the IIT Madras hostel. The police suspects suicide due to academic pressure. A shocking report on how carelessness cost many Chennai residents their lives on the railway tracks. India is the diabetic capital of the world, but now a solution inside the condition can be curable within a week. Chennai's dream metro rail project comes closer to reality, first phase to be completed in 2013. And after the shameful loss at the Caribbean coach Gary Kirsten cracks his whip on Indian players. The day after NDTV Hindu reported Nalini Sriharan's claim that prison officials tried to poison her, the state law minister Durai Murugan has said a panel investigating the charges will release its findings within the next two days. Shabir Ahmed reports. The government of Tamil Nadu ordered a probe after Nalini Sriharan, jailed for her role in the assassination of Rajiv Gandhi, said prison officials poisoned her food. She made the claim in the latest in a series of five letters she wrote to the head of Tamil Nadu's prisons. Nalini's charges were discussed in the state legislature. The jail officials, they are going to even add some poison in our food and they are trying to kill her. This is concocted and stage managed story. Definitely cannot be believed at all. Nobody actually uh, even uh, tried to even kill her or give poison to this lady. Issues involving Nalini have been raised for the fourth time in the current session of the legislature. It is hoped the probe by the state-appointed panel will be fair. Law Minister Durai Murugan informed the State Assembly that Nalini has petitioned officials regarding some grievances and made some allegations. A committee has been formed early this month following her complaints and grievances. This committee will verify the charges and submit its report in two days. Sources close to prison authorities say that Nalini's requests to shift her from the prison in Bello to the Pulal prison near Chennai is being seriously considered by the investigating committee. In Chennai with Shabir Ahmed, Jason Tosh for NDTV Hindu. So the other big story of the day, respite to Jai Lalitha and a big blow to Shashikala's relatives. A state-appointed panel has ordered a piece of land at Sirita Wood near Chennai, owned by Ms. Jai Lalitha's close aide Shashikala and her relatives, to be distributed to the poor in that area. The panel further said that the land in Kanchipuram district was forcibly occupied by relatives of Sasikala. The panel, however, has not charged Jai Lalitha with involvement in the case. Tamil Nadu's chief secretary has ordered the Kanchipuram district collector and the Commissioner of Land Administration to oversee distribution of the land. Our political reporter Shabir Ahmed gave us these inputs. Here on this uh, 600 pages report, it is very clearly said, uh, uh, three points have been laid out uh, very clearly that there are no direct allegations against uh, Jailalitha, honorable uh, leader of the opposition and hence uh, no notice was issued to her and on record also there was no material uh, to suggest any involvement of her in this entire uh, Sirdaur land uh, uh, grabbing issue and at the same time uh, Sasikala is concerned uh, and uh, they say that uh, she has not chosen to deal with this issue of uh, involvement of her family members and that is why she has always kept away uh, not appearing before the commission despite uh, summons have been sent and the uh, two people uh, whom uh, very clearly uh, the commission has nailed is uh, Sudhakaran and Ilavarasi who are found to be the beneficiaries and uh, have favored uh, with illegal transfer of uh, Pata on a single day without any inquiry and uh, uh, the, the, the total amount of land they have uh, encroached is uh, 71.37 uh, acres uh, which encompasses 17.93 uh, uh, acres of assigned land. So they, they, it's clear that they have uh, encroached the land and, uh, and it was illegally bought and uh, they have also manipulated uh, records to escape the clutches of law 
and that is why uh, the commission has come down heavily on them and nailed them and we have to wait and see what action will be taken against them. Now a lawyer in Chennai has filed a petition at the Supreme Court to direct the centre to help the mother of Sri Lanka's defeated separatist leader Velupalai Prabhakaran to get medical treatment in India. The petition is likely to be heard tomorrow. Now, 80-year-old Parvati Ammal rejected an Indian visa after it imposed too many restrictions during her stay in India. Earlier, she was deported by Indian authorities when she landed in Chennai for her treatment. Now, in this petition, the lawyer R. Karupan said that Supreme Court should tell the Indian government to allow easy access to medical treatment for Parvati Ammal in India. The shocking incident, the decomposed body of a 26-year-old MTech student was found in a hostel room in IIT Madras. The police suspect that Sandeep committed suicide by hanging himself in his room at the IIT campus. Our crime reporter Salim gave us the details. The deceased is identified as 26-year-old Sandeep who was doing his MTech in Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. The hostel authorities grew suspicious as his room was locked from inside continuously for two days. When they peeped through the window, they found Sandeep hanging from the ceiling fan and immediately alerted the Kotrubaram police. The cops broke open the door and moved the decomposed body to the Royapeta Government Hospital for postmortem. Meanwhile, the hostel authorities informed the man's relatives. Sources say that Sandeep was always worried about his studies. The MTech degree is actually a two-year course, but for him, they extended the degree program for one more year. Even the police suspect this to be the reason for the suicide. Now uh, the postmortem is over uh, and uh, uh, the body has been handed over to his relatives. A, a detailed probe is on. A shocking story there. Now this may sound a little bit more jarring, but a local railway crossing in Chennai claims more lives than any dreaded disease. In what is becoming a trend, more people are dying as they avoid using the foot over bridge at the train station. Pratiksha brings us this report. Imagine this, you have more chances of dying while crossing this railway track than of dengue or tuberculosis. Just from January 1st till May 10th this year, six railway crossing accidents have been seen on this 100 meter stretch between the Krompet and Tambaram railway station. Last year, the death toll stood at 160, which was almost six times that of dengue and four times that of tuberculosis. The electric multiple unit trains, which run from Maramalai Nagar to St. Thomas Mount, transport hundreds of people to their places of work and study. The Krompet railway station, one of the most crowded, has had an overhead footpath built for commuters to cross the station. So why don't people use it? The railway police say that it is up to the people now. Railway cross pon na dinge train over bode, path cross pon na and suli parava thala makkal podo makkal na gellar ko bolai kisotra train over bode cross pon na kuda na suli. Even though bande bari kada na porto chilgara nga, adi meri kela gude bande violet printi thava na yevola thana nga na makkal da chola kuda violet printi thava gude nani jorna nga. Just on Monday, Uma Maheshwari, a 29-year-old professional, lost her life when crossing the railway track in Krompet, like these people. Lama bande thava yevo interview porto ora nga. This is the exact spot where Uma Maheshwari lost her life. The Krompet railway station, which has an overhead footpath provided for the residents of this area to cross the road, is hardly in use. Uma Maheshwari, like hundreds of other office goers living here, tried to save time and ended up losing her life. With camera person Anand, this is Pratiksha Rampumar for NDTV Hindu. Up ahead, a ray of hope for diabetic patients. A new drug could cure diabetes in just a week. More than that on the other side.